Hello, welcome fellow traders. AMP Futures here presenting another how to video. In today's video, we're going to go ahead and talk about how to roll contracts over using your TradingView platform in anticipation for next week's rollover for the micro and mini index products that trade on the Chicago Mercantile Exchange. Now, if you're not familiar with what rollover is, normally when you're trading a futures commodity contract, depending on what market you're trading, there's different expiries and there's different rollover periods. So right now, if you notice on the top left corner of the chart that we're looking at, we're currently looking at an exchange traded futures contract, which is the micro E-mini S&P 500, which trades on the Chicago Mercantile Exchange. So mini and micro index products typically trade quarterly. So the quarterly expiries are normally start with March, then June, which is what we're currently trading now, then September, and then December. So next Thursday is going to be the official start of the rollover to September from June. And in this video, we're going to show you how to roll those contracts over. Now, of course, if you're trading other commodity contracts such as crude, gold, or silver, normally they'll have different rollover periods. Sometimes you'll see commodities roll every month. So just be sure that you are aware of when the rollover periods are for the market that you're trading. And then you'll be able to follow the guidance in this video to have an understanding of how to roll the contracts over in the actual trading view software. So first, let's go ahead and show you how to roll the contract over. Another thing that I want to point out as well that's very important I'm also going to show you how to identify the proper symbol mapping for CQG whenever you roll your contracts over. This is very important because TradingView has their own symbols, but whenever you're trading with AMP futures with TradingView, you have to use the CQG symbol mapping in order for you to successfully route orders because CQG is what's used as the actual order routing technology to send your orders to the actual exchange for execution. So I'm going to go ahead and show you as well how to identify the difference between a CQG symbol and a trading view symbol. So first things first, right now we're looking at the June contract. So we're going to be rolling over to the September contract and we're going to go ahead and add it in our watch list. So you should have a watch list open. If you don't have a watch list open, it's usually this button here in the top right corner. You just might have to click it so you can actually see the watch list. The next step is you want to go ahead and click this little plus sign here where it says add symbol. And then you'll see this add symbol box populate. So let's go ahead and since we're already working off the micro S&P 500, I'm going to go ahead and type in the, the symbol root, which is MES. And once you type in the symbol root, TradingView will automatically identify what you're trying to find. It will populate the results. As you can see here, micro E-mini S&P 500. And now we're going to hit this little arrow pointing to the right. And this is going to collapse down all the different symbols that are specific to MES. Now, this is how you determine the difference between a TradingView symbol and a CQG symbol. A trading view symbol will always end with a numerical one, or sometimes you might see a two, but it will usually end with an exclamation mark. So you can see right there, MES numerical one exclamation mark. So that's a trading view symbol. So again, anytime you see a symbol that either ends in a one or a two with an exclamation mark, that's going to be a trading view symbol. Notice below, however, you can see now it says F.US MES. So whenever you see it says F.US and then the symbol root, that is confirmation that you're looking at a CQG symbol map. So that's the symbol map that you have to add in order for you to actually route orders with AMP Futures using the TradingView software. So now we're gonna just basically look for the appropriate contract month. So again, you know, I've been doing this for many years. There's abbreviations, which is kind of odd. I, I'm actually curious to find out the logic behind some of the abbreviations for some of these contract months. So for example, for June, the contract abbreviation is M. For September, it's U. So in this case, we're going to go ahead and click here where it says MES U2024. That's specifically the September contract. So if you look to the right there, you'll see a little plus sign, and this is going to add it to the watch list. Now, whenever you see an X, that's just letting you know the symbol is already added into your watch list. So you can see right here, you can see MES M2024. So now I'm going to hit this little plus sign, and now you can see the September contract has been added. Now I can close it, and now I can click on the MES U2024. And now you can see the symbol has been successfully applied onto the chart. Notice there's little gaps in data because the volume hasn't fully transitioned over yet. We haven't got technically into the rollover yet. The rollover really starts next Thursday. It's normally the second Thursday of the front contract month. So when I say front contract month, the front contract month right now is the June contract. So if I revert back to June, you can see now the candles look a little more uniform. There's consistency in the candles. But if I go over to the, to the September contract, you can see there's kind of gaps in data because the volume's thinned out because the volume and the liquidity hasn't transferred over to the new front contract month just yet. So normally what happens is on the second Thursday of the front contract month, the rollover will start and then the exchanges will give you about a week 
to roll your positions over to the new front contract month. Or if you don't have any positions, just rolling over in general. And normally what you can do is you can kind of look at the trading volume on the CME website to kind of get an understanding when that transition of volume shift really starts to happen. It doesn't necessarily happen right you know, right on next Thursday, for example, you'll start to see gradually that volume start to shift. And then as you get closer to expiration, which is the following Friday, the volume will very will thin out, you know, tremendously on the current front contract month, which is June. And you'll pretty much see most of the volume shift over to the new front contract month. So this is a good indication of when you can roll over. You can kind of look at the volume, but technically speaking, the rollovers typically start the second Thursday of the front contract month, and then it follows by the expiration the following Friday. And this is how you roll contracts using the TradingView platform and also how you identify the difference between CQG symbols versus TradingView symbols.